it's it tremendously cooked? cooked and I yeah. did, I just like smelt it. I was like, yeah, that's cooked. I'm not even gonna review it. I'm sorry. It's sorry. I, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I said it was flat and cardboardy, so I suppose that probably should have tweaked something in me. G'day guys, welcome back to another episode of Wine for People's Blind Wine Tastings. Uh, this week we've got another six wines to try. It looks like three reds, three whites, and the game is Guess the Year. Uh, all of these wines are from the same vintage, um, and this is going to be one of those classic things where you're going to hear me saying, oh, 2008 was famously a hot year, so it can't be 2008. I don't know if 2008 was a hot year though, but that's for Brendan and Noah. Um, as ever, big thank you to Different Drop for supplying us with these wines. If you want to taste these for yourself, make sure to check out the link in the description down below. We've got our own little section on their website. Use the code WFTP, get a cheeky 10% discount. It's good for you, you get money off. It's good for Different Drop, they're making money. And it's also good for our channel because uh, we get a little bit of a kickback on it. Um, so please, if you like the wines, use the code, go buy some, drink them for yourself, see what you think. But for now, let's get into wine number one. Let us begin. Uh... Guess the vintage. The uh, I think we've done all of the other options games in in wine for the people with different drop. We've done probably country, region, definitely done variety. Um, we've done producer. We just haven't done vintage, so we're completing it. Thanks, thanks guys. We've done it. Yay! Yay! Crystal clear, brilliant clarity. I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it and thinking it's probably Chardonnay. Something about these sort of wheat grain coloured highlights to it. That tastes like. Uh... If you go to a bar and they do like house lemonade and they use like a lemon syrup mixed with soda water, that tastes like an oversaturated version. Like they've used more lemon syrup to soda sort of thing. I wouldn't mind a little splash of soda water in there, some ice and just turn it into a lemonade. Super lemony is what I'm trying to say. It's still so young. Like it's very green. Um, there's a nice decent amount of sugar in here. Definitely brute. Like they definitely got some sugar here, but it's very green, very young. It has that young Chardonnay taste. Lean, fresh, brilliant, green apple, like crunchy green, like slightly underripe Granny Smith. Beautiful, beautiful one. Don't think it's Chardonnay, think it's Prosecco. I reckon that's gonna be pretty cheap. I reckon it's gonna be in the 20 to $30 range. So we'll go 28 bucks. And I'll have, uh, do I want a dozen? I mean, in terms of sparklings, I wouldn't mind it. I'll have a dozen, yeah, for sure. Nice way to start out. Number two, uh, nice, got a bit of gold going on here, a bit of deeper color here. Mm, so we're definitely dealing with some age. Ooh, I think this is corked. I think this is wine, wine is corked, unfortunately. Let's see how we go. It's corked. Uh, wine number two is corked. That sucks. Yep. Uh, we're gonna see if I can taste anything after it. First flavor, super yummy. Second flavor, this sort of, uh, kind of like sweet corn at the back end, except less sweet and more sort of like corny. This does, it does taste like it's a little bit older. Like maybe it's not quite as fresh. Yeah, I'm not really getting too much besides cork over the top, maybe like a little bit of like lime oil or something like that, but yeah. Tastes like it was a good wine before a cork had its way with it. I would return this. Tempted to go Chardonnay again, but it's not quite buttery enough. So I'll go like Semillon, Semillion, uh, duh, 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 year, we'll stick around 2019 for now. I reckon it's gonna be $35 and I'd like three bottles of it. Flat, it's corked, it doesn't really have any character. There's tech, there, like there's technique there, there's great acidity, there's great texture, but underneath it, there's no flavor and the flavor's just gone, um, which is really disappointing. Um, so hard to judge what it was, what it is, what what year it is because there's just no vibrancy to it. Um, but I will. Yeah, this is a really good pace. It's like custard tart. So you've got all the, the nice sort of brioche from the bread there, but you know it's actually had a bit, little bit of maturation. It's got this really, almost like key lime pie um, for those American friends of ours uh, who avidly watch the show. Tastes like the sort of wine that might have a problematic opinion on the upcoming referendum in Australia. Um, like it's just got a little bit of age to it. Maybe it's cool, you never know, but not to stereotype, but 
generationally, people tend to have some held beliefs that other people don't. That's a weird reference to put into wine. Anyway, but yes. Um, I'm not really seeing like any identifiable, these are probably gonna be from a bunch of different regions. So it's gonna be really difficult to identify like the style of each wine and the region's specificity based on the, the vintage. So it's like, you know, you can taste a 2020 uh, Yarra Valley Pinot Noir. It's gonna be really ripe because it's a really hot year. Oh yeah, great. Like moderate to low acidity, honeyed, like rounded back palate. I've seen a little bit of age on this as well. Oh, that's fantastic. I, you'd be fooled into thinking it's Chardonnay. I don't think it's Chardonnay actually, uh, only because it just doesn't have the, the same structure. It's it's quite sort of, I don't wanna say, it sounds terrible to say, but it's quite flaccid, but it's it flaccid in a nice way. Yeah, flat and sort of rootless. That's making me think these are a little bit older again. So maybe we're moving into like the 2018 range. Uh, I reckon that will be $40 a bottle and I'll have three of them. I probably would have liked to drink that a couple of years ago when it was just a bit fresher. <laughs> But we're moving into reds now. Typically I like yeah, older reds more than I like older whites. Uh, here we go. Still looks pretty bright and colorful around the edges there. So it doesn't have that really old thing going on when you get brown terracotta. -y. I reckon that's a wine in its window. I'm gonna go Cab Franc. Because yeah, it, the tannin feels really seamless. The primary fruits there and then that nice kind of herbaceousness is really kind of adding complexity to the wine. And nothing feels too out of place. It really is very, like, it's a seamless little wine. It's very complete. Great tannin expression, like, like full. The structure's fantastic, uh, pixelated. Middle palate's a little bit hollow. So I'm kind of getting the impression this is like Southern French or Southern Italian, Sicilian perhaps. I would imagine this would set me back, I'm gonna say $38. I actually think it's gonna set me back more than that. That's how much I'd be willing to pay and I'd buy two bottles. There is tannin, but it's really soft. So it does feel like it might be a little bit, like again, we've aged these somewhat. I'm going 2017 now based on that. I think it's a Cabernet. Got that sort of like stemminess that either rightly or wrongly associated with Cabernets over the years of tasting them. Um, but it's so fun and approachable. Yeah, I'll give this a, I'm gonna have half a dozen on this bad boy. I'm gonna go 42 buckaroonies. Got that kind of Cab Franc vibe, like savory, juicy, but structured. One, if it looked like this, and hopefully the second one didn't look like this, but that Brett's just playing on my head a little bit too much on this one. I'll get to the age in a second. I'm, I'm sort of thinking that we've got a modicum of age here, but it's not too much. What that is, we'll reveal at the end. Uh, wine number five, getting into that dark fruit now, baby. <sighs> wine number five, again, still got a fair bit of color around the edges there, starting to fade out a little bit, which is what I rightly or wrongly look for when I'm trying to decipher an aged red wine or not. Oh, that smells good. That smells like butterscotch snaps. Well, butterscotch if you're not an alcoholic. Um, oh, it's got this caramel thing. <laughs> so it's probably some good maple syrup. It smells like maple syrup. Like I've just tapped a maple tree. Yeehaw. Go Canada. You know, that has amazing sort of honey texture that could only come from, you know, tertiary characteristics from aging. Awesome. And and this one here is, is almost port-like. Like it, it is it is basically the de oxi uh, oxidative development in the presence of probably what looks to be a fair bit of alcohol. Um, you know, might be a new world, you know, Barossa something or other. This is, um fun, like this is good pub wine. This would be great pub wine because quite often, you know, when you're going to a pub and you feel like a glass of red, you're not necessarily, like chicken schnitzels aren't something that I really consciously pair with a lot of things, but if I feel like a glass of red and I feel like a chicken schnitzel, this is the perfect glass of red to have with it because it's not gonna, neither of the two things are gonna impact on the other. I can have my glass of red over here and then 10 seconds later, I can have a bite of Parmigiana and it's not gonna really factor into it. Um, actually, Parmesan pairings is something we should work on because I do need to know what I should drink at pubs. This is a good bet. And the last wine, one more red wine. Bit more hands off, a little bit more tailored back. Like a, like sweet buns you get like at the bakery where it's like really nutmeggy spice, but really dried fruit. Mm. Really high acidity on that one, which is nice. Like if it was low, then it would kind of be, a, again, a little bit flabby, lacking texture lacking structure. I would happily pay $41. <laughs> bit, of a, bit of a silly number. $41 and I would buy one bottle. No, I'm not the biggest fan of this. I haven't bought a lot of these wines, to be honest. Um, as to age. Oh, yum. Again, these are all really 
uh, dying in the ass palette uh, lengthwise, in which I actually really like. I don't, I don't know if that's a popular thing to admit amongst wine lovers, but I actually have a lot of space in my life for red wine with very short palette length because I like that little tease that you're drinking red wine, but I don't need to be thinking about it the entire time that I'm sitting down with someone. Uh, it's quite good. Three. I like a younger sand. I don't like an aged hand, uh, but that may change in time. But I reckon this has probably had uh, a 60 buck little amount thrown at it. Um, but really good. That cult number, it's this one here that, that I'm toying between like 2012 and 2010. I don't think it's older than that. I'll be surprised if it is like, like 08 or something like that. I'm gonna go 2012, 11 years and see, uh, see where we land up. Let's see if I get the tail on the donkey closer than the other two. Really interesting little one. Shame about the second one being corked, I think. I'm gonna go 2019. Yep, all right, lock it in, Eddie. We're going 2016 as the guests on the vintage year. Let's see how wrong I was and see what the boys think. Oh, righty then. Uh, we're back, we've got six more wines and we're trying to guess the year this time around. Yeah. So, um, did you find this an easy thing to do? Did you find it really challenging? What year did you end up on? I found this very challenging. I found it exceptionally challenging for many reasons. Yeah. I thought they tasted a little bit all over the place. Like I thought the whites tasted somewhat less, uh, Old. somewhat older. Yeah, so, sorry, fresher than the reds, which I thought had really died off to a certain That's degree. That's interesting, I was the opposite. Yeah, right. I, well, I was like you though. I, I thought these showed more aged characteristics than these did. Yeah, so like as I was going through, like oh, I started yeah. out thinking like, oh, 29, 20, 2019, 2018, yeah. then I got to 2017, and then I threw it all out the window and went to 2016 in the end. Well, do, do we want to try to, that was 2016 was yours. Do we want to reveal the year first? What when did you, you guys say? I said 20, I toy, toy, toy between 2010 and 2012 and went with 2012. Okay. 2019. Okay, so 16, 19, 12. Oh, oh you win. Oh, close. <laughs> <laughs> you were fucking a year off. Damn it. Well done. I had 2017 for the last two reds, and then I was like, nah, it can't be. Go 16. Why That's not? amazing. Well done, dude. I, I struggle to see these as 2017. That's five years. Six years. Six years old. Depending on, uh, between five and six, depending on your hemisphere. <laughs> Let's go through the wines then. Uh, cool. One number one, was it sparkling for you? It was very sparkling for me. I got, it wasn't sparkling for me, but I could tell it was a sparkling, and it was also my wine or liner. It was my wine or liner too. Uh, it was in my top three, um, but like three dozens that I had in the lineup. It's like clean sweet. Lemon, it's so lemony. Like it tasted like the uh, lemon syrup that we used to make lemonade, but. Yeah. I struggled to reconcile this with the rest of the wines. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was like, how is this? And it kind of is probably like, you know, a statement of sparkling's oh. ability to mature. Yeah, and, exactly. And right. just mature so slowly in this sort it, of reductive atmosphere. It's so green. Yeah. It tastes it's like so green. It tastes like pure cordial without any mixture in it to me. Like it's so It's yeah, I need that bad. Yeah, have that. So Sorry. <laughs> it's it's tasty. Wine. It's a good wine. Um, I probably went way under on the price with everything in mind now knowing that it's 2016. Uh, 2017, do you think it's champagne? Do you think it's not? No, I think it's I Aussie think made. It's, I think it's, yeah, it's too, it's not quite um, seamless enough to be champagne. I had it as sparkling Chardonnay. Um, yeah, I thought it was 2019 when I was drinking it because it tasted fresh. Yeah. Well, I said I'd drop 35 bucks a bottle on it and buy 12. Yeah, I, I was hoping for a bargain too. I wanted. <laughs> I, was, I said 35 bucks and 12 exactly you the same. You think you want a bargain? I, I said 28. <laughs> <laughs> Is it one of those I would firmly buy, like like a lot of yeah. people have you know, put in the comments, like, do we actually buy these? No, we don't. It's if this is value, it's on, but, but this was actually one that I would genuinely yeah, buy. I, I think I, I went for 100% um, Chardonnay as well. Then mm. The color may be looking like a little bit, uh, oh, it's still looking it's pretty pale. Crazy, so I don't mm. know. Anyway, it's lucky. What is it? Uh, yeah. That's kind of appropriate. It's appropriate. Yeah, given that we all, <laughs> yeah, we're all just <laughs> going. Maybe it's cheap. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, it's, it's not like cheap. us going it like, is, oh, I good mean, sparkling wine. It's not expensive please. though. It's not like fifty, you know. So it's oh, that's cool. Gembrook Hill, Gembrook Hill, Blanc de Blanc, hundred percent Chardonnay. 100 Chardonnay. Hey, there it is. So far, you're on hundred percent strike rate. How fucking good. Yarra Valley, uh, six years on leads, disgorged early this year. Jesus fucking Christ. So that's that been so young. bottled this year. So this was bottled uh, actually six years ago. Six years ago. So it's on Lees in bottle. Right, what does this gorging mean? So basically oh, um, is that you get the wine, it's fairly fermented, and then you put it in bottle whilst uh, you then add uh, liquor de tirage, dosage. Uh, dosage. Yeah. Uh, 
No, Tirage. 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 Tirage, sorry. Fuck, I need to get this right. Um, Tirage, so you put it in bottle and then you age it for six years and then you disgorge it and then you top it up and dosage it and then that's released to the public. So it was in bottle for six years on Lees, opened uh, at the beginning of the year, then dosed up with a bit of sugar and ready to go and then released it to the public. Cool. Probably not too long ago. Really nice mm. wine. Really nice wine. Very fun wine. Actually, yeah. But for, for, for a six, price point. For six years on Lees. You'd be paying triple that if it was from champagne. Yeah. Maybe some change as well. <laughs> <laughs> a lot more. Yeah. Um, which is really good. Uh, good stuff. Sparkling shard to start out with. Uh, number two. Mm, fucked. Uh, fucked. It's fucked. I exclude. It's it's corked. It's, it's corked. It's is tremendously it? corked. And I yeah. did, I just like smelt it. I was like, yeah, that's corked. I'm not even gonna review it. I'm sorry. It's sorry. I, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, I said it was flat and cardboardy. So I suppose I just sort of <laughs> <laughs> probably should have tweaked something in me. I did kind of forget about corks being a thing. If you went to a bottle shop or you went to a, a, a wine bar and you ordered this, you'd turn it back. Which is just you would send it back. We'd get it. We'd get Unless it you mean, in which case you'd spend thirty five dollars. And get three bottles of it. <laughs> <laughs> what, what did I say? Yeah, I didn't even I didn't even buy any either. I was like, I, just, I, just, I, just, I just went yeah. corked dash move on. Yeah. Um Lucky, what was it? And I'm very sorry. Oh no. No, you'd be cut. Oh no. <laughs> I hope it's not gangster. Oh, oh it's Pouille Pouille. Pouille. Oh, it's Pouille Pouille. <laughs> Yeah, right. Chardonnay. Yeah, it's Berg. <laughs> it's Berg. <Pork> Berg. <laughs> Oh no. Jeez. Oh, Grand Vin. Oh, that's, it, that is, this is, welcome to the world of wine. This is just what the pain that you experience when you drink wine. That sucks. <laughs> when you've got pui foods, that that's sucks. Cooked. Ugh. Oh, oh, fuck. Um, and this is why DM is the best closure for wine. Wow, smell that. Yeah, pretty musty still. Yeah. Yeah. It kind of smells like the wine. Mm. Hey. <laughs> it's so annoying. Hey, uh, JJ wine, wine Merchants, we might need another bottle, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, Moving right. right along. I love this next one. I thought it was real, really charming. Yeah. I, I called it flat and fruitless. Oh, uh, I mean, you yeah. Can't go wrong. Yeah, it's like got, it, but uh, not negatively necessarily, but it was just super. This is the first of the whites that I was, oh, given that oh, I, I had no idea what was going on with number two. This is the first one that I was like, okay, this is. This is older. This feels older this, to me this, than this the other two. Like nice, like well matured muscadet. Like this, this tastes. And keep in mind, I was also thinking this was 2012. Mm. Um, mm. But it's like just this custard tart thing. It is custard yeah, tart. Like, and the honey back palate, I just think's all class. But yeah, I, I liked it. I just wish I had a bit more of that fresh fruit kind of character. So mm. I went half a dozen for about 40. I had exactly the same. I <laughs> can half hell. a dozen at 40. I had three for 40. So we think it's forty dollars. We think it's forty bucks. How much is it? Oh, hey! bargain! With seven dollars, we can buy a coffee. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. In this economy, with normal milk. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's back again! <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's, it's That's fucking Bruce hilarious. Bruce has become the new Grenache Blanc. Oh no! It's become the new Aligote. <laughs> oh my this god! This is great. This is good. I thought it was good last time as well. It'll be good oh, to know so what funny. was the score that I had for this last time. Okay. Oh, this is my least favorite one of the lineup. Oh, me too. I hated this. I said I'll take negative three. Oh, negative three. Because I don't want it so bad. You're, you're giving it away. I wanted six <laughs> bottles and I wanted to pay 45 for it. Uh, I, I wanted not bad. I wanted two, but I reckon it'd be a bit XC, so I reckon it's 50 bucks. I think I was three and I was higher. I thought it was, I thought I said three, but more expensive. But I've paid, I bought more, but well, paid what we less. know is that Gemma hates it and we shouldn't accidentally put it in a glass of wine for her later. Wine number four. Um, yeah. I quite liked this. Yeah. I thought this was a charming little uh, like Loire Valley Cap Franc. Yep, yeah, could could easily be. Yeah, I reckon that's that's a pretty good shout too. Uh, it's got that black olive tapenade thing. It's just the Brett I found really hard to get around, and I was a bit. Eh. I, I just I, I thought it potentially Sicilian, but I think the Cabernet. Oh yeah, you're right. One. Yeah, it is bready. <laughs> <laughs> wow, and I so didn't notice that earlier. Naturally, kind of... the price I thought was thirty-eight. Uh, I went three for forty-five. And you liked it though. Yeah, I didn't mind. I thought it was Cabernet. I thought it had that sort of like stemmy thing on the back end, a little bit green. Um, I got the year right. I thought it was 2017. But yeah, it didn't <laughs> didn't grab me. I've also now figured out what you're talking about by Brett. Like I can smell it, it now. Yeah, yeah that it's funky that weird thing. Yeah, like spiky almost is a weird yep. way of describing spiky? it. Spiky? Yeah, I think it's spiky. Spiky. Oh, uh, dude. Oh, yeah. We danced around it. We danced around it and I swear to God, I actually did. I did actually price one of these at specifically $41. Have <laughs> some. 
Alan Andrew. Loa! Yeah! Brad! Nice. <laughs> Cabernet. <laughs> Cabernet. Well. Hey! Well, I, I'm going to say that as a team win. We're doing alright. Oh, that is fantastic. Brad Cabsap yeah. Loa. Well done. <laughs> Brad <Yes>. Cabsap Loa. <laughs> <laughs> Many parts make the whole. 100%. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, I, I, I think now that you've t said that that's Breddy, I like it less now. Because For some reason I like it more. <laughs> <laughs> Correctly rated, you know, we're talking about like rating wine regions and stuff. It used to be back in the day, it's like, man, Loire Valley, Anjou, it's like really underrated. Mm. I think now it is correctly rated mm. and and I, I'm struggling to see wines that extend much beyond these. They, they have this mid-tier nailed. Yeah, you got this and then there's a giant gulf yeah. and then you get Apex, Chenin and uh, yeah. Sauvignon Blanc. Like you get Apex, Sanse, you get amazing like Anjou, Chenins and stuff like that. But there is a big gulf. But this, like 40 bucks on this kind of style is perfect. Um, um, now getting into the reds, I really liked these last two wines. It was quite about them. Um, so, yeah, okay. What, were they corked? What? No. <laughs> like, what What's man? With them? Stop shooting my puppy. <laughs> um, uh, portiness, uh, just, yeah. uh, just, just portiness. Just, yeah. I'm not sure whether it's age or heat, being heat affected, or maybe they're high alcohol, like high octane. I think it's high um, alcohol. Yeah, and I think both, both as well. I, I wanted to love them. But these, these aren't examples, though, and this is particular to me, they're not examples of maturation in wine that I look for. But there are plenty of people in the world, yeah. way more than just me, yeah. that yeah. look for The majority these of people. majority of people look for these things. Yeah. So I can appreciate that. The things that I liked about these two wines is that it's got that sort of like old fruit flavor at first, but then the palate length on it's really short, so it doesn't sort of nag you with being like, this is what it tastes like, this is what it tastes like. Yeah, cool. Fucks up. So I called this really good pub wine. Like, I reckon this could go it's really nicely with a schnitzel. Pub wine. I reckon you're gonna call that as great pub wine. It's gonna come out at like seventy bucks a bottle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I've got it as twenty eight dollar an ash. But before we do that, Henry, I'm gonna do the, my favorite game to play with you, which is here's an a, a obscure thing that I smelled, and I want to see if you pick it up now. Okay, Maple let's go. syrup. Ooh. Fuck me, man. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, no, nah, it is in there. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's very caramelly. Uh, it was I pretty actually, good. I called salted caramel on it. Yeah, yeah. But, we're in the same wheelhouse. Yeah. Hey, yeah. It's weirdly sweet, or it might have been the next one. Who knows? Either way. A bad Don Bueno. Yeah, or could be Grenache. Menthea. Menthea. Oh, I'm never going to call Menthea. Menthea. What the? From Bietho. Uh, 12 months in French oak. Man, 80 year old Menthea vines. That's fucking cool. For $26. Uh, wow. I'm sorry, everybody at um, Different Drop, but this is actually a 2018. Um, and um, you, you did not. What the fuck? Fuck the integrity of this show has yeah. now been ruined. We've been duped. We've been duped. <laughs> Different drop. I'm coming for you. I thought I was doing <laughs> well. It's probably, <laughs> it's probably the reason why that's actually one of the standout reds. Because wait another year, it'll be just as shit as the rest of them. Ah. <laughs> Now nah, that's what messed up my year, guess, because everything else tastes like the same year. That threw me out. Um, now, <laughs> yeah, everything else, yeah. Wine number six. Just, just quietly, is this like a sidearm of Alpha Box and Dice? A bad A B A D A D and P. A bad Alpha Dom Box Bueno. and Dice. <laughs> it was Alpha Box friends. <laughs> Number six, liked this too. I like Similar this too. sort of reasons, like less less than the other one. Found it again that portiness. I'm just a little bit meh. This is really. I think that it, it is a bit like we've used this bottle system for years on this show, and we've never really nailed down what exactly it means. Like, yeah, because yeah, I yeah. use it as just like a rating of how much I like it, whereas you think pragmatically about like how much do I need this wine in my life. Well, I suppose I suppose the first stage of the dollars side of things for me is how much pain am I willing to go through financially pain to access it, which I think is a much more accurate reflection of how much do you love this thing? Like how yeah. much cash are you willing to put down? How likely are you willing yeah. to put a ring on this bottle? Yeah. Right? But and then it's like, how many of the bottles do you actually want? See, I'm doing so the, money's not an object. I'm doing the complete opposite thing to you, where I'm using this as me trying to guess how much the person who's making it wants to charge for it, and this is my register of how much this I like. This is basically it. wine with whose line is it anyway, the points don't matter, the scores don't yeah, matter. Yeah, nothing really matters. It's just sheer vibe. Yeah, it's vibe. It's yeah. ge genuinely vibe. <laughs> James Halliday 2025 is going to be just vibe ratings. It's just vibes. Um, yeah, All right. 40 bucks, dozen Shiraz. 63 Sengevese. Uh, forty-one dollars and one, and I don't care what it is. I think it's I think that's. Castagna, and it is Le Chivre. Fuck, what is it? Oh, 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 oh. Doesn't say. Blanche doesn't say, but it's uh, uh it's a Shove. Beechworth Ben from uh Castagna. So La, so it must be kind of Italian vibe. I know these guys make 
great Sangiovese, um, which is pretty iconic. Mm. Let me let, let's let's have a quick little look. Enjoy in moderation. We can fast forward this part of the video. Now. Wait, what yeah, made about? from single vineyard BD Sacro Sangio. Just read, dude. It was, it was on the back label. It's just it's written, just written there. It's like the, the fifth yeah, word. Yeah, in. but it just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I went big numbers. I said made from a single vineyard. I just thought they just put the, the variety first, like most Australian wines. Hey, no, it would have made sense. That that's from these that's guys. cool. It's cracking Sangiovese. Yeah. I actually think I read it that poorly. I reckon I would buy more of that now. I've okay. never seen a wine with the Google Maps coordinates for the vineyards on the back. And they actually say Google Maps. Yeah, the it says Google, Google Maps. Maps. Like and you then don't in. use Apple Maps and Waze. No. Just Google Maps if you want to find the location of this wine. Yeah, it'd be all, Google awesome. Maps uses different latitude and longitude to the rest of them, I believe. Um, anyway, that's uh, that's all that we've you got know, time for. Oh, no. What this showcase, I just wanted like a point of note of interest from a technical standpoint for me mm. is that once you put this wine in bottle, it could go so many different ways. You know, so seeing uh, the effects of, oh shit, it's corked. Mm. Like that was, the winemaker didn't didn't intend that. No, that. no you oh, wouldn't. Oh, we got a bit of bread. You know, yeah. the winemaker didn't intend that to happen. Oh, things are looking a little bit too honeyed and full bodied. The winemaker didn't intend that to happen. It's, it's really hard to, to see what the development of a wine will, will sort of go yeah, along. Yeah, true. It's kind of that's like you encounter these aged wines that are just astronomically delicious. Well, that's why you keep it in bottle for six years before you release it. And then you crack an open wine <laughs> yeah. and you go, that's okay. And they'll put it out some yeah, And then you tweak it. And you tweak it. It's, it's, it's just fascinating to see because all of these wines exhibit all the different aspects of, of maturation, right and wrong. Um, that is completely out of the control of the winemaker and completely up to chance. There you go. Pretty amazing. Cool. A beautiful way to finish. Uh, <laughs> Thanks for joining us, guys. Get you some Yarra Valley bubbles while you can. Absolutely. That was fucking Wine amazing. See you next week. week. Yeah, for sure. Ciao.